let's add these amazing blocks to Minecraft. Alright, we found ourselves back in IntelliJ once more, and in this tutorial we're going to be adding stairs, slabs, fences, fence gates, and walls to Minecraft. Now, a lot of this will include JSON files that we're going to be copying over, so block stage JSON files, block model JSON files, and item model JSON files. Now, all of those are available to you in the description below, either in the GitHub repository or in individual gists as well. I highly recommend Basically, I'm telling you, you have to download them and have to copy them over. There is no, oh, I'm just going to type this out because they are way too long. Just making sure that you know that at the beginning of the tutorial. And there is another great resource which I'm going to show after we have registered all of the blocks. So first of all, in our mod blocks class, what we're going to do is we're going to take the endstone citrine ore right here. And we're just going to copy this over and we're going to get this down. And this is going to be the citrine underscore stairs. And then changing this here as well, citrine underscore stairs. Now this is going to be a stairs block, but before we're, gonna, before we're gonna make this, we're gonna copy this four times, and then we're gonna make this a stairs block. We can see stair block, and it actually takes in two parameters. The first one is going to be a supplier of the actual block that it is made out of. So we're gonna say mod blocks dot citrine block dot get that default block state. So there you go. And now we have this done correctly. And let's just format this a little bit differently. It's going to be fine. And then the second one is going to be the slab. So this is going to be the citrine slab. Very important. The stairs are stairs and the slab is going to be slab. Now this is going to be a slab block. No other thing required to change here. Then we're going to have the fence. So this is going to be the citrine underscore fence. And then a fence here as well. Fence, there you go. Now this is, of course, a fence block. Same with the next one. This is going to be the fence underscore gate underscore, or rather, citrine underscore fence underscore gate. There you go. And same with the name. Very important that we change the name as well. And this is going to be a fence gate block. Now let's also make sure that all of the materials here are actually a metal just because that makes a little more sense in this case. And that is going to be fine. So let's just group them together a little bit. And the last one is going to be the citrine wall. And this is going to be the citrine wall as well. And can you guess what this is? Of course, a wall block. There you go. And this is the registration of all of our blocks done. And now the favorite part here are the JSON files. Let's first of all add the very easy thing, and that's going to be the translations. Those are, like I said, I mean, that's pretty much the easiest part of this. I'm going to copy this over as well. This is, of course, also all available to you. Citrine slab stairs, fence wall, and fence gate, as you can see. And now when it comes to the JSON files, there are, well, multiple positions or multiple places where you can take a look at them. You can either, like I said, look at my GitHub repository or in the description in the gists and copy them over from there. Or, and I highly recommend this, I cannot recommend this enough, in the external libraries, if we go down all the way to the following, this one right here, Net Minecraft Client Extra 1181 or whatever your version might be, and you expand this, then inside of the Assets folder, in the Minecraft folder, you can see block states. And here are all of the block states JSON files from all of the vanilla, well, basically blocks. It's incredibly easy. You can just, you know, select this, control C and then control V pasting in your own block states folder. And then you have access to these JSON files. I can highly recommend taking a look at that because that just makes your life a lot easier. And then you can also copy them over from here. So this is also possible but for the time being we're going to take the ones that i've already prepared this is going to be the slab the stairs the walls the fence and the fence gate and let's just see don't be friend by this because you know we're going to go pretty crazy so the slab actually one of the ones that is fairly straightforward and actually not that crazy let's just wait until you see the stairs then you're gonna then you're gonna probably say oh my god that is quite crazy and then you will understand why you can't just type it out i mean even typing out this would be kind of annoying to be honest but the general idea is that you have different variants. So in the past, we've seen that, you know, the variants were empty. We had no variants and one particular model that a block states JSON pointed to. Now, however, you can see that we have a particular type block state property. This is what this is called. And they can take this one in particular can take three different values, bottom, top or double. And depending on what type of value this has, it points to a different model file. 
And that is pretty much all that there is to it. Now, let's take a look at the stairs because they're going to completely throw you for a loop. So you can see that is just, you know, a cool 209 lines, as you can see, because here we actually have three different block state properties and they can take, you know, however many different values they can. And then you just have to sort of multiply this. And then you can see that there are a lot of different cases here that there are. And in some of them cases, you know, we still just have the same model, but we're rotating the model around. So Y270 just means that we rotate the model by 270 degrees. And then if the UV lock is true, then that just means that the texture is not rotated with the actual block. That's the general idea here. And overall, the block state properties, we're going to go into detail of for those in a later tutorial as well, because they are very interesting and we can do a lot of things with them. But for the time being, we're just going to sort of accept that there are some properties that a block has when we set it down into the world. Each individual block that we set down in the world, even if it's the same stairs block, let's say, can have different properties. That's the general idea. So we can have different properties and then we choose different models based on those properties, on the values of those properties. Now, a very important thing here is if you have downloaded those or copied them over from the uh, client extra external libraries here, if your mod ID, for example, is different, what you can do is you can select this mod ID and press Control R to replace this. So then you can say, for example, maybe your mod ID is cool mod, right? Then you do this, replace all, and then you can see all of this has been replaced. Very important. This is possible. And then the same thing, of course, with the name of the actual stairs, right? Let's say, oh, you don't have citrine. Maybe you have ruby. So you can then just say this, replace all once again. A second thing that is very important, if you want this to be done for all of them, you can select the folder and press Control Shift and R, and then this replace in file comes up, and then it is going to be replaced in all of the files inside of the block state uh, directory, basically. So that's also really cool, and they could also replace all. When it comes to the renaming of the file, you will have to do it right click, re refactor, rename, or you can also select it, press Shift F6, and then also possible to rename. It's basically the same thing that has to be done manually or at least i haven't found a, an easy way to change this if there is an easy way to change this of course feel free to correct me in the comments below however for the time being those are sort of the hacks to make this a little bit easier on you and yeah that's pretty much the block states json files and then let's move on to the block model json files now those are well th those are plenty there are a lot of them and that is pretty much also why this is also pretty crazy so those should be uh, 16 of them actually so you can see the fence gates the slabs the stairs and the wall as well and this is pretty crazy so overall the interesting thing about the block model json files is that they are actually really freaking boring so most of them have just different parents. That's the only thing that changes here. So you can see the open one has the template fence gate open. This one has the template fence gate. If you have the slab top, all of a sudden it has the slab top. Overall, all of the JSON files are really boring, like I said, and the, particularly the block model JSON files. The block state JSON files, those are not boring. Those are quite exciting, to be honest. But the block model JSON files simply always just point to the block texture in our case. So they always point to the citrine block texture because all of our blocks, the slab, the stairs, the fences, and also the wall is supposed to just have the different model, but it's supposed to have the citrine block texture. And that's why those are fairly boring, all things considered, though I usually don't tend to spend that much time on them because there's nothing crazy to it. Just make sure that the parent is correct. The block model JSON files are, of course, also available to you in the external libraries, and those would then be under models block. And then you can also copy them over from here as well, and then use the control R to replace stuff as well. So that would also work. When it comes to the item models, well, they are also, I mean, not the most interesting, all things considered. I think the most interesting stuff of all of this is definitely the block state JSON files. You can see they, once again, just point back to one particular block model JSON file, and it usually has the inventory here. I believe the stairs don't have that. The slab also doesn't have this, but the fence gate should have this. No, but only the fence and the wall have the inventory one, and the others just point to the normal block model JSON file, right? No texture has to be added, but what does have to be added is a particular tag. So this is very interesting. So in the data folder, in the Minecraft folder, under blocks, we need two tags. 
One of them is going to be the walls.json and the other one is going to be the fences.json. Now what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to copy over the contents of this one because of course once again the tags always look the same. So this is going to be tutorial mod colon citrine underscore fence and then we're going to copy this over and this is going to be the citrine underscore wall. So this is very important to add those because otherwise the walls and the fences will not connect to each other. So this is very important. This is why those are definitely needed and they are not optional. So that's very important to add those as well. And then actually everything should work totally fine. We've registered everything. We have added the block states JSONs, the block and the item model JSONs, as well as the two very critical tags that we definitely need to add. So I guess let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves back in Minecraft. As you can see, all of the blocks that we've added have been successfully added to the game. The fence gates, as well as the fences, everything connects. The stairs work perfectly as well. They also work in, you know, all directions, just like you would expect them to. So everything working exactly how they're supposed to and everything looking absolutely freaking amazing. Right, and that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So, yeah.